Alright, welcome back good people. This video I'm talking about how agents work in business. This week I had done research on the distribution part of an entrepreneur. The distribution part of business. And when you think about that, it's like the back office of a business. That's where all the distribution takes place, right? Not when you walk into the store and you see all the different items that are available. No. It's the back office that handles all that and that's the part that you'll need to know because you being the owner wouldn't that seem to interest you <laughs> yes it would and if you don't know it chances are very good you won't be in, in business very long because people are people right so I want to share something with you on this video about the agent part about that and then I'll go into a little dialogue after that about uh, how other things work so it says how agents work in business Many entrepreneurs turn to distributors, also referred to as wholesalers or distribution agents, to get the widest coverage of their products at the lowest cost. Distributors will sell your product or service to other distribution channels such as retail stores or directly to your target customers. What is the difference between an agent and a distributor? Essentially, the difference is one of product ownership. While a commission sales trade agent sells products on your behalf that you continue to own and invoice the ultimate customer for, distributors take ownership of the product and sell it on their, to their own customers. That makes sense? Okay, now what is the role of an agent? Agents do not take ownership of goods but act as a representative of the supplier. They are also engaged by exporters of services to represent them in overseas markets. An agent is generally paid by the exporter based on a commission of sales value generated. The exporter receives orders from customers from the agent but then delivers goods or services directly to the customers invoices and customers and collects payments from the customers. The exporter is also responsible for setting and selling price, although the agent will likely provide input on local market conditions to help the exporter decide on pricing. Now agents are generally based in the export market and often represent several comp complementary product or service lines. They may operate on an exclusive basis as the sole agent for a company's goods or services in a specific export market or as one of a number of agents for the exporter in that market that is on a non-exclusive basis now the advantages of an agent is number one would be you have control over branding marketing and pricing number two commission on base agent Commission only based agents agreements can be a good incentive for higher sale volumes of your products. Number three, agents tend to have a smaller product range than distributors, which means that they can provide more focus on your products. Now the disadvantages, number one would be a sales agent may have fewer resources than a distributor. Number two, Working on a commission basis can mean that the agent is less committed to your success. Number three, close attention is required to monitor the effectiveness of the agent. Now these are disadvantages, remember. Number four, a poor agent can, own, can not only ruin your opportunities in the market, but also undermine your marketing efforts and reputation. Number five, working through agents as opposed to distributors provides less protection from risk of non-payment, currency fluctuations, product rejections, warranty claims, etc. And number six, you risk losing market share if your agent is poached by a competitor. So if you want to become an agent in the process of distribution, that's an option for you as well. Just like if you would like to become a wholesaler or if you would like to become a retailer. But they, as you can see, they all kind of work in conjunction, right? If you are a distributor of a product, chances are very high 
that you're going to cross paths on a regular basis with an agent, a wholesaler, and you're going to be dealing directly with retailers because that's where you as consumers go to buy things. You go to stores. And when you go to a store, those stores have been filled from different uh, dis distribution channels to supply those products so that you can buy them, right? Now, if you had to explain this to somebody, would it be difficult for you to do that based on what I've said? If not, then good. I've done a fairly good job by explaining it. If so, then play this back and just kind of rewind it in your mind because you're a consumer also. When you go to the store to purchase something, whether it's milk or whether it's you're going to purchase a car, you are the customer. You are the consumer who is in search of a certain item, right? You're looking for pricing. You're looking for uh, a good deal, right? You want uh, exactly what you want if you can get it. If not, something very, very similar at a discount will be possible too, right? And you have to think about that when you start to think about owning your own business. Think about how you deal with uh, owners when you go to a store or how you uh, deal with uh, the help, the people who actually work there, right? The agents, right? How do you deal with them? Because at some point you'll probably hire other people to become agents for you that work within your system. And, uh, you know, you want to treat people right, right? You don't want to be like, just like a butthole, right? You want to kind of give and take based on, you know, what you're receiving. If I'm being cordial and nice and understanding to you, you want to kind of reciprocate that, right? You want to kind of be that way as well. And that's the way it works. That's how it works, right? All right, don't forget to like these videos, share these videos, and I'll see you on the next video.